This is how you can make your Zoom calls go from this to this, where you get a smooth, blurred background. This video, I'm gonna share some ways that you can blur your background, some different ways using your digital camera, or even some ways around that if you don't have a lens that can do so. What you're probably familiar with is when you click the video icon down below here and you open up your settings. And when you click on video settings here, you'll see the pop-up screen that you're probably used to right now. And you're probably familiar with the option when you scroll up here, where it says blur my background. Now, the reason that you probably wanna blur your background is you might have some things behind you. You don't want people to see in your calls. You might not have a green screen or the best environment for your office space. So blurring the background can definitely help because it blurs it out and makes it a bit more private for what's in the backdrop there. But this here with the zoom built-in settings, this uses up more resources on your computer. As you can see, it cuts in and out and it doesn't look very professional. It looks pretty bad on screen, plus taking up all those resources on your computer. The reason that my background still is blurred is because of the camera that I'm using and the lens. The equipment that you're gonna need is gonna look similar to this. There's lots of different cameras and lenses that make a difference to the camera footage. For example, I have a camera lens up there that's a 35 mil lens. I also have this lens here, which can do the same effect. And this lens here, which is actually the stock lens that comes with this camera, which this camera is the Sony A6400, which is a digital mirrorless camera. First up, you're gonna need a camera. It's either gonna be a cropped sensor or a full frame sensor. And the lens that you choose, this stock lens won't achieve that effect. I'll show some examples with all three different lenses here so you can get some comparisons to see what these lenses look like and how they show up on the camera in zoom so you can have an idea of what to look for when you're trying to pick your camera if you want to have a setup like this. Apart from the camera and the lens, the other equipment that you're going to need is you're going to need something for your camera to have a battery life to make sure your camera doesn't die during your calls or if you're filming. And you're also going to need something to send the data from the camera to your zoom call. So what I have here is the cam link and you can see it's connected by USB into my computer. Also in the camera I have connected is a HDMI. So the reason I like this camera is it has a HDMI clean pass through. Some digital cameras don't have a clean HDMI, which means you can see all the things on the back, like you can see here on screen, all these images come through the HDMI. So you wanna make sure you can pick a camera that has a clean HDMI option in the settings. You can use natural lighting, like for this shot here today, it's very sunny. So I'm just using a lot of natural light in my background scene. Also, I have a studio light there. And I have another key light here, which I can turn on if I wanted to as well. So this lens that I have here has an f-stop of 1.8. So the lower the f-stop, the more blurry the background that you can have because you can let more light in. It's gonna get a lot brighter, so you have to adjust some other settings on your video. But having that lower f-stop will give you better low light, but also better blur as well. So trying to get a lens that has the lowest f-stop which will be great for blurry backgrounds. But you can achieve this effect if you don't have a lens that goes this low. This lens I've got here is great for talking head, zoom calls, YouTube videos, but it doesn't have the versatility to zoom in and out with different focal lengths. That's why I have this lens I like to use a lot when I'm filming different things, so I can zoom in. And this one here, this lens is another Sony lens and it's an 18 to 105, so it has those different lengths I can zoom in and out. And I'm gonna to switch to it here so you can see the difference. Now I've just taken off this lens and replaced it with the 18 to 105 lens. As you can see, it's zoomed out quite a bit here. So for this lens to get a blurry background, I just need to zoom in on the camera. As you can see, some things are different. I'm a little bit darker in the scene because I have a higher f-stop. The lowest this lens can go is four instead of 1.8. So there's more darkness. I can't let more light in. So I'll have to adjust this by either adjusting some of the cameras like the ISO or adding some more light. So I have a key light bouncing off the wall beside me. If I turn that light on, that gives me some more light, but I may need to lift it even further if I want to make it as bright as the other lens. So now I've turned this light up to max and it's brought some more light into the scene, which is good. So I'm roughly in the same frame, but I'm not getting as much blur as I would have been from the other lens. As you can see, this lens is a little bit blurry. It's not as blurry. It's very soft. It's very sort of minimal. So you can see a lot in the background. It's not a full blur. That's due to the compression on the lens. If I put my hand to the camera, you're gonna see it's gonna focus on my hand, but blur the background behind me. So my hand's gonna be closer towards the lens. And as you can see behind me, it's a lot blurrier. As you can see, my hand is in the frame. It's not super close to the camera, but because of the compression of the lens, I've got that blurred effect on the background. So if you were sitting closer to the camera, you would probably get that blur as well. This is a very versatile lens. I use this lens for a lot of different things. That's why I like this lens. But for the best effect so far, this lens has the best blurred background effect 
And this last lens is the stock lens we're gonna look at. I'm gonna put it on here and you're gonna see that we're gonna have zero blur effect, even if we zoom in with the lens. Now we have the kit lens, which is the lens that comes with this camera, which is a 16 to 50 millimeter. And as lowest f-stop is 3.5. So it's a little bit lower than the last lens that we had here, which is this Sony one, which is the 18 to 105. So you're gonna see it's not gonna have much of a blurred effect, even though we've got a little bit lower of an f-stop. I'm gonna zoom in on the camera here on the scene and you're gonna see, we're gonna crop it to where we had our frame before. You're gonna see how much blur we get. So I've cropped it in a bit and I've turned up the ISO just to bring up some more light as it's a little bit darker. But you can see here, we've got a blurry background, very, very subtle, very slight blur, but not a, a drastic blur like we had before. So, and if we repeat the example where I put my hand up to the screen, now with my hand in the same place that we had for the previous lens, the 18 to 105, you can see the blur is a little bit blurry in the background, but it's not as much as our original lens that we had, which was this lens here. So this lens is definitely the best one for that blurred effect. But this lens here was the 35 mil lens and the f-stop on that one was 1.8, so quite low. So now I've switched back to the original lens. As you can see, it doesn't look as blurry and you're probably wondering why. And remember that we were switching through the lenses and I turned on this light here, which matched my exposure. But one thing to always check when you're switching lenses, if we take a look at the back of the camera here, the f-stop was saved from the previous lens. So it was on the lowest that was from the last lens, which is our stock lens. As you can see, it was sitting on that 3.5. So it made the scene match the exposure from the lights. If you are changing over the lens, check those settings as soon as you put your new lens on. So the stock lens here I've taken off and you can see I'm a bit overexposed now because I've got that light at max. So if I turn this light off, that's next to me. It brings down my exposure and I look a bit more even. I'm still pretty bright as I adjusted the ISO settings. So now I've turned down the ISO settings and you can see it's brought down back to sort of where we had it before, where I've just got the natural light from the background. And you can see it's quite blurry now. It's more blurry from before because we've lowered that f-stop and we've matched our exposure. So there's a few different ways. Cameras can be a little bit tricky because the light and the exposure from the background can come from a few different places. So a little bit tricky, but you balance it out between if you're doing video, between your ISO and your f-stop. But if you don't want to invest any of that money and maybe you just have a webcam or something like that and a green screen behind you, I'm going to leave you with one other little tip that might help if you want to get that privacy and that blurred backgrounds. As you know, having that effect in zoom like this where it blurs your background doesn't look good. If you have a green screen, you could do this where you could find a picture of a blurred background and use the green screen effect in zoom to get that privacy effect and look a little bit better with a green screen. What I have done here is I've got the green screen behind me. If I go over to my video settings here and I click on choose virtual background, here's the option where you can actually blur it. You can see if I click blur, that's the bad version that we don't want. None is still holding the green screen behind me. And we have these other backgrounds that we can choose from. But I want to make sure we click this button that below here it says, I have a green screen. If we tick that option, it's going to use our green screen to cut us out from the background. I've uploaded two virtual backgrounds from Canva. I just searched a blurred background like office space, something like that. So if I choose these, so this is the first one. It looks definitely a lot better than the blurred background. If we do a comparison, you can see this is without the green screen and that ticked. You can see it's cutting me out, but you can see the green coming through from the computer and it just doesn't look great. This is the second picture I found on Canva. So you can grab pictures like this. If you have decent lights or natural light coming through, you can use the green screen and tick, I have a green screen effect and basically cut yourself out of the image and just use a blurred background like that. So there's a couple of options for you if you don't have all the equipment necessary to get the cameras and the equipment. If you just got a green screen and a webcam, you can definitely use this effect as well. So to recap, if you wanna get this blurry effect here and look more professional on your calls, you're gonna to need to get a digital camera and make sure you check the type of sensor. So if it's a crop sensor or a full frame, also you wanna make sure if you're picking a certain brand, either Sony or if it's a Lumix or a Canon, that you pick the right lenses that have the right mounts that fit that camera. If it's the same brand and lens, they will technically fit. Also investing in the equipment that you might need like the cam link to connect your camera and all the other cables and equipment like lighting. Make sure you get a nice bright and lit scene for your videos on Zoom calls and choosing the lens as well. Making sure you pick a lens that has tick all those boxes with that lens that's compatible with your camera. Making sure it's got a low f-stop 
as possible. Somewhere possibly between two and one. If you can get the lower ones, the better. If you need any further assistance with your audio and video setups and presentations, we do offer remote support where we can jump on a Zoom call. We can help you set up all your camera settings, your audio routing, your lighting setups, any gear recommendations, anything you may need or troubleshoot feel free to reach out or if you want to have some suggestions for your gear recommendations for your personalized studio, feel free to reach out as well and see that link below if you want to book and get some assistance. So thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.